Hi, this is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. <laughs> it's fantastic. You don't know how fantastic it is. The world is, is such a... so hard to describe the roller coaster that we're all going through in our life. And the scariest thing, scary in a, in a, in a good, in a positive way of saying it, great thing that Hashem made in His world is that really all the prophets were right. All the prophecies really will take place and are taking place in, in our time, in, in the redeem, redemption that is about to come and taking place, happening right now with us while we eating our chips and, uh, and, and enjoying life, drinking sprites and whatever. Hashem is making things undercover in ways that are so fantastic that, that no, no one even paying attention. The distraction is so, the volume of the distractions are so high, you can't see the redemption and like it can happen now, in a second, like whoa, what, hap what just happened and it will be viral on Facebook, on YouTube, everyone will know it, the redemption took place already a couple of hours ago, Mashiach came and, no, and, and okay, new, new, new life. We, we all in our minds were so welcome, thank you for joining us to our therapy session, welcome. <laughs> When I'll finish, it will be your turn. You're speaking next. No, you're third. So, Hashem made it that our mind will, today in this generation, will be so, so full, so occupied, so busy, so overwhelmed, that we're not paying attention even to what that goes on in our life. We don't see how fast we're speeding up and for an example me just for an example when i'm thinking about myself myself like me really when i'm thinking about me who that i was a few years ago and not talking about 30 years ago when i was in a whole different place i'm talking about not even 20 years ago when I was in a different place. Talking about even three years ago, when I'm thinking on my mindset three years ago, I was a totally different person. Even if I was already teaching and lecturing and talking and going on tours to the US and start doing what that we're doing now with the Amuna Project. Even though that I was in it, I was so different. It was such a different place and I'm not paying attention even to all the details, to all the changes in me, my changes, how Hashem made me different, how Hashem took me to a different place. Think at yourself now, you're thinking about yourself today and you have complaints on yourself and things that you do wrong and you want to fix it and you want to learn this topic and that topic, you want to work on your happiness. Okay, now go three years back and remember, remind yourself, where were you holding three years ago? It's sick, it's crazy. It's a whole different world and you cannot enjoy the improvement. You don't enjoy the development of those three years till today. And even if you say to yourself, no, it's worse, three years ago, at least I was alive today <laughs> without my iPhone, without my Facebook, I cannot fall asleep, I cannot go to sleep without my, my craziness, without movies and series, television series, and without whatever, okay. I'm aiming you, forcing you to look deep into the point of truth of your heart. Don't look on how confused you are. Don't look on how your mind is distracted. Don't look on how much you're scared and terrified and whatever. Don't look at that. Pay attention to your inner voice of honesty. How close you are today to who you are than you were three years ago. How much more friendly and able to forgive yourself you are today than three years ago. How much more humble you are 
and accepting others, how much more patience you have for other people, how many more understandings you have, real understanding, deep, deep grounded understandings about reality of life. I read in a fantastic book of Kabbalah, a very deep book of Kabbalah, secrets of Pnimiyu, the insight of Torah, secrets and secrets and secrets. And over there, the righteous, that author, righteous author is writing, that Hasid is writing, that when you see a shape of a man, he doesn't talk about people at all. That person sees only Hashem. When you're walking in the street and you see a shape of a man, you should aim, you should have that intention in your mind that you see Yud K Vav K, the name of Hashem. Great, fantastic, wonderful. And when you see a woman, you should aim in the second holiest name of Hashem, Adni, Aleph, Dalet, Nun, and Yud. Those are the four letters that you should aim when you see a man, Yud, K, Vav, K. A woman, Adni. Great, wonderful. What is he saying? No one can understand. He's saying that you should have that intention. So what now in the street, Brooklyn streets, I need now to aim Yud Ki Vav Ki and Aleph Dalet Nun Yud every person that walks. I cannot do that. I don't have the ability to do that. We're too distracted. Our mind cannot work in that speed. Maybe in Poland 200 years ago when that book been written, when you walk alone in that path and once in a while you see two people walking together and then four, oh wow, so you can have that pure intention. Maybe today at 2 p.m., no way that you will have the ability to aim those holy intentions. There's no way. But if you will look carefully, deep, deep, deep into your mind, following those teachings that we're talking all the time on having faith, faith in the Creator, understanding that the Creator Himself, He's that one that is covering Himself with all those figures, with all those coverings. Those are people, can be trees, can be houses, can be cars, can be animals, and it's all Hashem. And all of this wide world is only coverings that are reflecting the light of Hashem from within through those curtains to our eyes, but actually we are experiencing Hashem's light in every life experience, in every moment of our life. Now, based on that simple faith that we all understand, that you think that is simple, that you think that it's obvious, that you think that is small, with that simple intention, you can have that right intention of that holy righteous man, ancient righteous man that wrote his book 200 years ago and more. Because with that faith you can understand that all of your surroundings are only coverings of the Creator, of His godliness. So male, you'll aim with Yud Kei Vav Kei. You'll understand that Yud Kei Vav Kei's name, Hashem's name, is reflecting through those figures. Great. And that's the knowledge that is required for you when you walk in the street. Except of understanding that male are in the aspect of Yud Kei Vav Kei and women are in the aspect of Adni, of Aleph Dalet Nun Yud, you don't need to have no more intentions except of just believing in Hashem. To think about Hashem and to hope to Hashem and to remind yourselves of Hashem. And that simple understanding that for us it's simple. Look, now we're talking about it. And at least I haven't even fil finished high school. I have 10 years of learning in school, in secular school. Art school, by the way, just for you to understand how not educated I was. Like, I didn't do anything in school. And still, we're talking about it. And we're talking about it. And while we're talking about it, we don't understand how such a divine and high concept found its way to our mouths and to our understandings. And we're still hating ourselves and blaming ourselves and thinking that we're not talented and not gifted and wasting our times on Facebook and on YouTube and don't do anything and we're lazy and we're bombs and we're useless and worthless and hopeless and whatever. That's a lie. That's the lie of the evil inclination that took away from you the happiness from life, the sweetness of life. Just took it away from you. But if you would just put some time 
of positive thinking about yourself, just connecting yourself to reality, to where you really hold in reality, not imagine, not faking, not, not making up stories, fantasies about yourselves. The truth, where really are we holding as of today? We would be so proud of ourselves that the Creator is really revealing Himself to us, chose us to reveal His light, His face, because when He's upset, He's hiding His face. And when He's happy, so His face are shining, He's showing His face. Now, when His face are covered, there are no believers. No one can believe in Him. Because that's the reason why Moses fell on his face from despair. When Hashem told Moses in that day, I'm going to hide my face from them, he actually said, Aster, Aster panai. I'm going to hide the fact that I'm hiding my face from them. That's why Moshe fainted. Because he realized that Hashem is about to do something that cannot be fixed. If Hashem is hiding His face from you, and now you remember, oh, suddenly the light been turned off. I cannot see Hashem anymore. Something is wrong. There is a way back. But if Hashem is hiding the fact that He is hiding His face from you, nothing to do with it. What can you do? You don't remember that you lost the light. You never had light in your mindset. You lost it. You don't have even that urge, that desire, that inner will to go and seek for something. You forgot about it completely. Hashem said to Moses that this is what that will happen in the future. But us, that we came from that place. We came from that place of the unknown. We didn't know. We didn't remember. Even if we were religious today, I saw a religious person. Today, it was the most funniest moment of the day. It was so funny. If you can call that religious, so it's funny. Like, the religion is not in the picture at all. Really, except of a small keeper on his head, no connection to Hashem. Maybe from the side of Hashem, he is alive, he's functioning, he can talk, he can walk, he can like whatever, talk Lashon Ara, like many things he can do. But connection to Hashem, no faith, no, f I couldn't see it. Ask him, talk to him for five hours, you will not find no connection to faith, to a will to serve Hashem. Now that's darkness. That's darkness so even if we started our life the ones for of us that started our life as religious it's ridiculous it's not real religion we were disconnected in a, in a world of certain tradition following certain uh, habits or or customs based on the education that we've been taught been forced to keep with no real passion, with no real connection. So, it's complete darkness. Even if it can be lit in the future, even if it's closer to your eyes and you might see it, and it's maybe a good, I don't know, based on what, environment for people to come back to Hashem, still they need to come back. Because to grow religion, religious, doesn't necessarily mean that you're connected to Hashem. Worst, I think. I think that people that are close to it can, can be so disconnected from it in ways that, that are very, very hard to heal. Because they, while being so ignorant and so far and disconnected from faith and from real desire to come closer to Hashem, to believe in Him, to feel Him, to love Him, they think to themselves that they know all. Now, me, you, you want to teach me, you want to teach me on Hashem, you want to teach me Halakha, you want to teach me about rules of Torah. What are you talking about? I finished Shas when I was 20, I was doing this when I was 30, I was doing that, I was learning in the Cheder, right? Like, you cannot teach him. So if he is not a vessel to learn, he is not a vessel to be in touch with Hashem. 
because the connection to Hashem is a never-ending learning process of development, of rising and, 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 and enjoying the, that process of coming closer to Hashem more and more and more. And no matter where we started our life process, if we were religious or if we were secular, we started in complete darkness. So as people that started at complete darkness with lack of understanding about the Creator, and even though that we started so far, we can see that the Creator Himself is revealing His loving kindness to us, His unconditional love, sending messages to us, to our lives, penetrating into our bubbles with His individual supervision, supervising on every individual in a unique way, sending messages and signs and, 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 and angels, if it's to protect us and to open our eyes, if it's to heal us and to open our hearts, if it's to expand our knowledge with good friends or with teachers that are making our minds so rich and, 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 and colorful with, with new modern technology that is being used by the Creator Himself to reveal His love to us and to open our eyes to that concept that His love is available for all of us no matter where we started our process from, who we are, doesn't care about it at all. He loves you in unconditional love and He's inviting you to grow and to expand and to develop and to come closer with millions of opportunities. And even just to close your eyes and to breathe for five minutes, what that you can achieve while doing that simple thing, just being quiet, not talking for five minutes with your eyes closed, just thinking about the Creator, is something so high that in different generations, in early generations, people could not achieve. People didn't have that access to Hashem like that we have today. He opened His windows so wide and the light is so bright and so tasty and so satisfying and healing that every person that is willing to come closer to Hashem can swim in an endless sea of satisfaction and growth. And if you will ask yourself, so why I am suffering so much? If really this crazy Baal Tshuva is right, why am I suffer so much? If there are so many outlets of bounty, of good, holy wealth that are open for me, why I don't find the access? Why am I still suffering? The answer is simple and one. Simple answer. You are not looking to the right direction. You're looking for an external salvation. You are still looking outside to the world and hoping to be saved by people. And I know this sickness from myself. This is why we are suffering, not only you. This is why we are suffering when we have expectations and hopes that are based on the physical world, on physical aspects of our life. The external world is here for us to help it, not to receive satisfaction and joy and pleasure from. Only the inner light that is shining from a divine source into our bodies from within is our lifeline to all kinds of salvations that are needed for us. And you could, could pull out salvations and wonders and miracles from within with your mind, with your simple prayer, with your intention in ways that cannot be described. It depends in how much you will dedicate from your life to find that inner quiet place of yourself, of your own. Not being counting on no one else, not following no one else, finding your root, finding your source, 
finding the light of Hashem that gives you life. You know, if it's hard for those religious ones of us to understand those weird concepts, it sounds like modern spirituality, I don't know what, listen carefully. You're alive, a normal person, a regular Orthodox Jew. You're alive, yes. Can you connect yourself to your source of life? Is it allow for you to be in touch with your Creator, the one that made you, the one that gave you life? Is it okay for you to find your soul? Is it something that is okay? Is it okay for you to think? <laughs> is it okay for you to be? Or that it's not? If it's not okay for you to be because you're a woman, because you're a Baal Tshuva, because you're not Hasid, I don't know what, Babov, Bells, Doshinsky, Breslev, Chabad, I don't know. If you're alive though, to be alive, if it's okay for you to, to live, and you don't need to be exterminated, so just try to live. That's what I'm asking you. Try to find your source of life with no definitions, with no titles, with no ways and methods. Just find yourself, please. That's what I'm asking you. Just find who you are and then decide what you want to do with that. Find yourself for a second. Find your inner quiet place and confront yourself for a second, for a 15 minute session. Talk to yourself. Who am I? Okay, I remember my name, but if that's really me, so what am I now? Hungry or full, satisfied or thirsty? Am I in a rush? Am I speeding up? Should I stop? Should I think? Who am I? Who am I? Okay, I'm Dror Moshe Kasudo. What else? Who am I? Look deeper. Okay, I remember the name of my mother. My mother's name is Emanuela. Does it mean something about me? Who am I? Who am I? I'm asking. Okay, I have a wife. Yes, I have children. Great, wonderful. I'm giving a class now. Wonderful, amazing. But who am I in all of that? Okay, I think now a certain thought came into my mind that I have a certain will. Maybe my will is who that I am. Because my will is taking me to have my relationship and, and communication with my wife. And my will brought me to where that I'm standing right now giving a lecture. And my will is that thing that is driving me to eat and to wash and to drink and to rest a little bit and to learn and to pray and to daven. Go to shul, wear this shirt or another shirt. It's my will that is driving me. So what do I want? What is my will telling me? Who is my will? What is my will? And then you'll find yourself. Walk step after step with yourself. Try to remind yourself. Who were you when you were five? Okay, I remember myself sitting on the bank of the river. There was a lake over there. There were deers over there. I remember we were playing with a ball. I was running. I was falling. I remember I climbed that mountain. Okay, who that person was? Who are you? Were you happy? Were you miserable? Were you frustrated from the fact that you were miserable or that it was okay for you? Do you have an individuality? Do you know yourself? There are people that erase themselves completely. They are only their parents' complaints. They're only their husband's complaints. They're only the community guiding lines. They're the strict rules of their rabbi that they never met and ever will, hopefully. By the way, bless you. <laughs> bless you to be free. Be free. Today I, asked a, I spoke with a certain woman. She told me that in a certain community there are only 20 families. So I asked her, why you say only 20 families? Like thousands of people live there. So she said, I don't know, I heard that there are only 20 families in that area. We're talking about a city. 20 families city. I asked her, How, wh why, why are you saying 20 families? I said, oh, now I'm thinking, maybe he meant 20 families like us. You understand that, that there are more than 20 families over there? They're just not like us? It's wrong. It's wrong to think that there are only 20 families over there. 
because we are different. You're separating yourself from thousands and thousands of holy souls that can make you rich spiritually, that can open your eyes, that can help you to find ways how to raise your children, how to grow, how to be much happier. You know how much we as a family learned from the first time that we came to the U.S. together until today? It's three years that we are coming in and out from Israel and now we're already more than one year here and we learned so much from you guys, you cannot imagine. And we're taking all that knowledge with us and we're going and teaching it to others. And we're going with those conclusions and with that wisdom that you learn from every person. Like the Mishnah is saying, who is that wise one? The one that is able to learn from every person. When we lived in the Holy Land of Israel, that it's the Holy Land, and it's Israel, and it's the holiest place in the world, and 39 years of my life I lived in Jerusalem, in the holiest neighborhoods over there, and I've been hundreds of times in the Western Wall, and went to graves of righteous people, and I did things that people are dreaming to do. I had periods of times in my life that I was not going to sleep. My wife she, 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 she met me in the noon times once in a while. I was learning all day long after waking up so early, going to the yeshiva, learning for hours, and then going and distributing, selling books of, of, of faith to people, and then would come help for a couple of hours in the house, and then going out for nights on nights on nights on nights on nights, to do hundreds and thousands of hours of prayers in righteous people graves in Israel. I've been all over the place. For years I was so dedicated. I dipped in, in, in all the springs in Jerusalem area and in the north. I've been to hundreds of, 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 of righteous people six hours in that place and four hours in that place. I had nights on nights going to Rabbi Shimon in Miron from Jerusalem, one night after the other. And you will say, are you crazy? And the answer is, yes, for sure. That's what I'm talking about for so long. And yes, to Rabbi Meir Balanes, I would go, I had months like those. I would go out at nine after kids were asleep driving from Jerusalem to Bnei Brak, it's one hour drive. Over there in Bnei Brak, there were a few righteous people buried over there, drove from there to Natanya, to another two spots of two righteous people over there in Natanya. After being in Natanya, I would go to Tveria. Over there in Tveria, I would have at least five, six locations, cemeteries, graveyards of righteous people over there that I would go and pray over there. Same night, from Tveria to Tzfat, from Tzfat to Meron, from Meron back to Jerusalem through Haifa, and stopping in, stopping in the old cemetery of Haifa, when there are, there are righteous people that are buried over there, and then back to Jerusalem, oh, I'm sorry, in Jerusalem, or on my way out, or on my way back, 6 a.m. already, Stopping in Haram and Uchot, in few other righteous people, graves, Rav Shalabi, Rav El Yashiv, and more righteous people, Rav Mandel, that are buried over there, and more and more and more. And I was so dedicated, and I put my, my life on those things, and doing it over and over, again and again, night after night, week after week, month after month, and year after year, Things that cannot be described, I'm telling you, it's hard to believe that a normal person, not, that's what I'm <laughs> talking about, doing in his life, three times in my life, for 40 days straight, one time after the other, I made six hours Hidbodedut, individual prayer, one night after the other, 40 days, Every day of them, for six hours, I was, minimum six hours, I was talking to Hashem. A long conversation. Three times, 40 days like those. I did. And I did it my way. I did it my way. And I found a lot about myself, but I'm telling you, in reality, what that I achieved in all that effort is that simple understanding that Hashem Itbarach is here with us, open for all of us. 
I've been there in Israel for all of those years, 12 years learning in Yeshiva in Mesirut Nefesh and Mikveh every day, even in Motzei Yom Kippur, in the night after Yom Kippur, and even in the night after Tisha B'Av, going to the Mikveh, and if the Mikvaot in Jerusalem were closed at midnight, at night, it's closed usually, I would drive to the sea in Tel Aviv for another hour, and like that every day, there was a period of time that I couldn't go to Mikveh, I couldn't stand the, 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 the pleasure of going to Stinky Mikveh, and I would go and dip in springs, in, in simple springs around Jerusalem and my wife and the kids every day after picking them up from, from the school, from Talmud Torah, from Cheder, we would go to that village, to that village. Every day I went to the mikveh, every day, without no, no way that I would miss mikveh. It was not an option in the world that I would miss mikveh. And with all of that, with all of that crazy dedication, hour of learning Torah, seven pages of Gemara a day, and learning Zohar every day, and Sipurim Asiyot, and all books of Rabbi Nachman, and at least one page of Shulchan Aruch, and every day learning. I had period of time that every day I would learn 40 pages of Likute Alachot, the book of Rabbi Nathan. Sugar, crazy, Mishigne, <laughs> honest with you. And I'm telling you that with all of that, when I was over there in Israel, I had my negative approach on those fellow Jews that lives abroad. I couldn't understand them. Why? Because I never been exposed to their reality. I lived over there in the promised land. We were praising ourselves and feeding ourselves with how praiseworthy we are and how amazing our life uh, is and what amazing Avodat Hashem we're doing and graves of tzaddikim like you jealous and you think to yourself, oh wow, he been in Tzfat. I took one of my students to Rabbi Meir Balanes once. He was standing shaking. He couldn't believe. He was about to cry. I asked him what happened. He said, I, I, for me, Rabbi Meir Baal Anes, he was a person that came from, from the U.S. He said, for me, Rabbi Meir Baal Anes was like a legend. I never believed that he was really exist. It was just like an idea. It's written, his name is written in the Mishnayot, but like I can feel him, I can feel it. So for you, you look at Israel, you say, wow, and how, and, and whatever. And you, 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 you fall in a certain dream. But the truth is, that when I was there, I was wrong. What was my mistake? Because I was in my heart, separated from you guys. I thought that I was there, and I thought that I reached something, and I felt like, oh wow, it's amazing. And then Hashem took me to certain tours in the US, and I've been to Texas, and we've been to Florida, and we've been to California, and we've been to so many places, to Alabama, to, 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 like, I don't know, I, I think that I traveled the U.S. for sure, most of, of, most of you, more than most of you guys, for sure. We drove to, to San Francisco and back, like, we, we co crossed country, we, we been to places, to Georgia, to, 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 I don't remember even now, to, 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 Shay, help me with it, come on, all the locations. Arizona, we've been to Arizona, yeah, I don't want to forget no one. And then I realized that I was blind. No matter what that I was doing, I forgot my siblings that are in the exile. You know that our brothers, yesterday night, in the end of, of, of the fast, in France, they finished their fast at 10.44 at night. Like we thought that we're suffering here until 9.08, 9.13. They fast until 10.44. There are people around the globe that are waiting for our salvation. There is a community in Nigeria, in Africa, that are waiting for me to send them to Tfilin. And I'm sending them, hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to send them. A whole community that sits and waits to have the first pair of Tfilin in Nigeria 
begging for me to come and to visit them and to come and I told them I'm scared for my children we have five children what are you talking to me going to Africa I said yes it's the most joyful calm and relaxed place in the world you don't know just selling weapon and, and drugs to everyone in the world <laughs> except of that you no problems at all nothing all calm and relaxed and like I was blind to understand that people here are struggling, that people here are failing and falling, that people here are precious, that people here are amazing, that there are people here, that there are life people here. And you cannot feel it when you are somewhere stuck in your own bubble. Even if you think to yourself that it's a holy bubble, that it's a silver bubble, that it's a golden bubble, that it's a spiritual bubble, you're in your own prison, prisoner of your own patterns, your own selfish thoughts. And we need to break that bubble. We need to understand that we are all one soul, that the Creator is healing us all together as one, that the Spirit of Mashiach is hovering above the water of the Torah. That's what that is written in the Zohar Kadosh. The Spirit of Mashiach is not written in the Bible. The Spirit of Mashiach is hovering above the water of Torah. Means that even if you're learning above, even if you're barely understanding what that's written in the verses themselves, even if you find it hard to learn and to go deep into the concepts and to the deep understandings and to the right conclusions that you can come up with from the verses, from the Mishnayot, from the Torah, you can still enjoy the spirit of the redemption of our Redeemer that is hovering above the water, that if you just hold that book with your hands, it purified your hands. If you just took a long breath, you took it inside. Your lungs are now being healed. You don't understand the power of spirituality in this generation, how strong and powerful the desire of the Creator is to heal us all and to reveal His endless love to us. Because if He chose us, even though that we came from complete darkness and brought us back to faith, means that the curse is off. That what that He said in that day, I'm going to hide my face from them. I'm going to hide the fact that I'm hiding my face from them. It been finished, been cancelled. That decree is off. Because today there is a huge awakeness from within. People from foreign lands, from foreign cultures, from foreign places in the world with foreign and weird behaviors and manners are running toward Hashem like faster than a speeding bullet. People are waking up to life. People like me that I just described part of my history and 20 years earlier you could find me dancing with leather pants in, uh, on, on bars and on, in clubs with Spike's belts and, and Dr. Martin's red shoes. Like me, the same one, was doing drugs in Israel and in Amsterdam and, 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 and losing my mind, making Celtic tattoos on my arm, a huge Brist, brist, bra bracelet, bracelet, brace. How is it? What bracelet? On my arm and on my back, tattoos. Like who knows who I was? Nothing. Imaginations. And then the Creator pulls you out of that darkness and wakes you up, shakes you up, and brings you back to life. Okay, so one person can use mikveh once a month and another person needs thousands in different springs for his purification process. So okay, one needs once in a lifetime to be in the western wall and his shuvah is enough and another poor guy needs to break his head to thousands of tombstones to, to, to achieve the same forgiveness. Everyone needs to break his wall of separation to Hashem to come to the same conclusions and understandings. 
One can do one hour tshuva and one needs to confess in public in, thousand, in front of thousands of people on daily basis. It depends on the level of your sins on how much you need to fix. One Hashem is humbling him like that and one Hashem is humbling him like that slowly, slowly. But Hashem is humbling us all and Hashem is taking care of us all and you don't need to compare yourself to no one else in the world because you are an individual unique beam of light that the Creator Himself sent through you to reveal in the world and you are so needed and so precious and so required and so gorgeous and wonderful that there is no one else in the world that is the same as you because you are reflecting godliness to the world. You are not reflecting your individuality. Your individuality reflects the light of Hashem that is an endless light. And this is why we need your face. And this is why we need your voice. And this is why we need your opinion. And this is why you need to use your emotions and to be aware to your senses and to your feelings and not to ignore them. No matter who is trying to deny you and to break your spirit to half or to crush you completely to dust or worse, even to burn your ashes, to, to hide the tracks, you need against all forces of evil tea to stand up back on your feet and to fight for justice. Justice is that you will be allowed to talk and to be. You don't need to ask for more than to be who you are. That's it. That's redemption. You want to know what redemption is all about? That you will be able to be who you are. That's freedom. That's redemption. Vekarati lachem dror. That Hashem is saying, I'm calling you free. That's it. That's redemption. That Hashem will make us like the sparrow bird that cannot live captivity, cannot live in prison. Like we cannot live in prison. We can be behind bars, but you cannot call it life. That's not life. When you cannot express your emotions, when you cannot say your opinion, that you're not able to talk, that you're too scared to think out loud. And if you're right, and if you're wiser than him, and if he's wrong, and if he's taking you down the drain, so why did you let him? Because you're afraid, so confront your fears and slap your face once a day or twice if needed. And don't let go of your desire for life to hold you back from being who Hashem made you to be. If you would be a creation of a certain rabbi, I understand you have a gratitude for that rabbi. Thank you, master. Thank you, master. Great. But you're not Pinocchio that owe your life to the grandpa Geppetto. So you need to find your own connection to who that made you. So connect yourself to who that made you to be who you are. And now with that, you should flow. You should be. Now, people around you are afraid to let you go. Why? Because they're afraid that you will not going to follow their terrors, their fears. So they're putting you under pressure and telling you that you must follow their advice and that you cannot move away. And you, when you will start moving away, you know what will happen to you? The same thing that happened to me. When I decided to uproot myself from that orthodox, closed ghetto neighborhood, Bet Israel, Masharim, in Jerusalem, and to move to a mixed neighborhood, I felt in the first time of my life panic attack. You know why? Because I felt like that's it. I'm about to die. I am leaving my rabbi, I'm leaving my community, there's no chance in the world, I won't survive, he won't pray for me anymore, I won't make it, and you know what? Since then, until today, I, me, the silly me, saved lives of thousands on thousands of people while being alone, on my own, depending on my own logic. I was so terrified that I'm falling off the derech, that maybe I'm losing my way, I'm losing my attachment to the righteous ones, maybe the blessing. Which blessing was it? 
I was terrified. I was a prisoner in my own mind under the rules and guidings of the system. You know what? Today you know why I'm keeping Shabbat? Because I want to. You know why I'm respecting my wife? Because I respect her. Because I love her. You know why we're going to the mikveh and we're learning Torah? Because we love it. Because we want to. Not because we must and what will happen to us if we won't. We're not scared of no one and nothing. And we couldn't care less what other people will think, even if their name is over there and out there, chief rabbi from this place and from that place. I'll tell you the truth. I couldn't care less what they think about me. I don't care. And it's okay for you not to invite me to speak in this place ever again. I will appreciate everything you did until today. But the truth is, I couldn't care less because I am keeping the will of Hashem. I'm doing what Hashem wants from me. I'm paying attention to the signs that Hashem is putting in my path, in my route, in the way that I look at life, I recognize the will of Hashem and Hashem's guidings. And you know what? I'll tell you, all of the fears that I had that I might lose myself came to me because that I was really not attached to myself. The truth is that my soul is shining from within and is willing to learn Torah and is willing to pray Shacharit and Mincha and Mayriv, is willing to go to the Mikveh. I want to put filin. I want to do all those things. So why was I thinking, doubting myself that I might stop doing those things? Because I've been told that the only reason that I was doing it is because of the greatness of my rabbis. But it's not true. When I started my tshuva, I didn't even know my rabbis. I never know them. I did tshuva because Hashem opened my eyes when I was alone in the fields, crying at night in my bed. That's when I started my tshuva, when I was alone. And this is why today I can keep on serving Him when I'm alone. Because really I'm never alone. Because He was with me since the early beginning of my life. As a soul before of my creation and coming down to this world, physical world. Hashem is with you. And you want to serve Him with no connection to your rabbis and to your communities and to the religion. Because you as souls have that dream of being reunited with your source and your source is God and that's why you desire him now you can find him in the old uh, in in the in the Bible you can find him in the old handwrites you can find him in speeches of certain people some of them are very famous rabbis that can quote amazing fantastic inspiring sources all great but you are not slaves and never meant to be ones. You are sparrows. You are free creations. And you should serve the Creator out of love. Connect yourself to Him out of love that is flaming in your inside. You are doing things from the earliest generations and you are here not in the first lifetime. We were all standing in Mount Sinai, receiving the Torah from Mount Sinai. There were no people that were more in front over there. Everyone were together. Only when we will all be together, then in that moment we will receive the Torah again. When we will be together. To be together, it's not to shut your mouths. It's that we will be together and that you will have the ability to be you and that I'll have the ability to be me and it won't bother me that you are you and I am myself. I will have the ability to accept you and you'll have the ability to accept me. And we both gonna approach Hashem and will serve the same one with our own unique ways. Everyone. One will sing, one will write, one will talk, one will dance, one will rap, Everyone will do it in his way. 
and together we will praise him completely and we will reveal his godliness in the world in a fantastic colorful way this is the way for redemption redemption is not prison redemption is freedom freedom doesn't reject you from serving Hashem Chofshila mitzvot free to keep Torah mitzvot you will find your own free will to serve to commit yourself out of love out of passion with holy desire with pure holy mindset an unconditional love that runs in our veins will spread between all of our surroundings and everyone will do it with a happy heart and a wishing soul that's the only way all the rest the other ways belong to the past belong to the exile belong to years of fears that we had had to hide ourselves that different governments that different um, nations won't attack us won't destroy us today we don't need to be afraid to be who we are today we can be proud of who we are we have a lot to be proud of a lot to be happy with and I'm not talking about the millions or uh, the IDF or our government I'm talking about individuality to be who you are you have so much to be proud of that you are who you are and you haven't bought that house yet and you can still be proud and you're still not married and you still don't have children and you still haven't finished shas wow so what you still have so much inside of you because what that you have inside of you is a unique beam of light that its source is heavenly and no one else in the world possess that beam of light no one else in the world received from heaven the gift the unique gift that you received only you so you can be very happy that you're attached to him that he chose you to reveal his face to you and to uncover his endless, endless, endless love to you. For that we need to be proud, we need to be happy, and to praise him, and to reconnect ourselves to him in our own unique and individual way. You got it? Go for it. Thank you. Hazak Thank you. Thank you. Great. Emuna Project is a nonprofit organization. You see? We're giving you those wonderful envelopes. You can put your emails, your information, your cash in them and uh, help us to save lives of people. I would love to answer your questions right now. And Bezat Hashem from heaven, they will answer all your prayers and all your holy desires. And mainly, mainly, mainly that you will understand that the Creator chose you to reveal His unconditional love to you because He loves you and He is not being judgmental on you. And He just likes your smile and the way you laugh and the way you think and the way you talk. And He's looking at you like a unique child the world for more please visit amuna.com may your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings amen